there, my name is Kelly Dale with Off the Beaded Path, and this is your Must Know Monday for Monday, January 27th, 2020. So last week, I showed you how to make this really simple burst on ring. Today, I wanna show you how to make a pair of earrings to go with the ring. So let's go ahead and see what we need to get started. Okay, so these are the earrings I wanna show you how to make today. They're really simple and I think they go great with the ring that I showed you how to make in last week's video. You'll see that this earring has a dagger bead. Um, it has a top hole in the dagger bead, just one hole. I know they do make a two hole. Um, and really this can be any size dagger bead that you have or you want. Um, I'll have to let you know by the end of the video specifically. I think maybe this is a 15 millimeter dagger. I can't remember, I'll look it up for you. Um, but this is the one for January for the garnet. And this is the one I'm gonna show you in the video today. This uses um, some beiges and almonds and things like that. So with the one I'm gonna show you how to do today, I'm gonna, you would need two six millimeter fire polish. So I'm using beige champagne. You are gonna need six 3.2 millimeter Montes. I'm gonna use vintage rose. I'm using a 15-0 bronze seed bead, an 11-0 perma finish matte galvanized al almond, and then the dagger bead, I honestly don't know what it is. It's like a champagne. I used it, um, it was just extra on my desk. Um, so that is what I'm gonna show you today. And then these have the um, Garnet Fire Polish, Crystal AB Montes, uh, nickel 15s, black 11s, and again, you can see I've mixed the brands, and then the garnet daggers. Now, just like last week, you really want to try to use a four pound fire line for this project. If you don't have the four pounds, you can use 1G, you can use KO thread, whatever you want to use. Just know that if you don't use the four pound fire line, your beadwork is going to get tight, and that's fine. So I'm actually going to be using the um, the 1G today, and I've got a yard of thread threaded onto my piece. And you're going to start with your size 11 seed beads. You want to thread on eight of these beads. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So two, four, six, eight. Now I'm gonna take and I'm going to bring these down, leave myself just a short tail here, and I'm gonna go through all of these beads again, and then I'm gonna tie them into a box, a circle, a blob, whatever you want to call this. Okay. Now, once you have your little box or blob or whatever, it doesn't matter which direction you work, but whatever direction you start in is going to have to be the way you keep working. So, I'm going to go through two beads next to the knot here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add the loop for my top ear wire. So I'm gonna thread on six 15s. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. My thread is coming out of the top of these two 11s, so I'm gonna come back around through those same two beads again. So as to make a little circle, just like that. Now I'm gonna go through this little loop of beads again just to reinforce. And then I'm going to go through the two beads I started with again. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to flip this over so that I can hang on to my little loop of 15s here. So a little right angle weave box. I have two for each side and two for the top and the bottom. I'm going to pick up a 15, a Monty, and if you'll remember from last week, 
The Monty has an X shape in the metal here on the back. So I'm picking up the Monty and another 15. My thread is coming out of the top of these two beads. So I'm going to come across to these two beads here and I'm going to come up through those two beads. So that way the beads will form a diagonal across that right angle weave box. I'm going to pick up 115 and I'm going to go through the other hole of the Monty. So you'll want to make sure that your Monty is facing upward and you can see there I'm going through that second hole. I'm going to hold that bead in place and pull the thread. Now I'm going to pick up one more 15 and I'm going to come up through these same two beads here on the side that I started with so that it finishes out my little X shape here. Now I need to be coming out of these two 11s so I'm going to come through the top two 11s and then I'm going to come down through these side 11s. All right, so now I'm going to pick up six 11s. One, two, three, four, five, and six. My thread's coming out of the bottom of these two 11s, so I'm going to come right back through those same two beads again to make that circle. Now I'm going to go through this box of beads again, and I'm only going to go through them two beads at a time. You do two beads at a time and you pull the thread straight the way that they're coming out of the beads. It gives you a nice squared off box. And then I'll go through the two here in the middle again. Okay. Now, I'm going to pick up a 15, a Monty, and a 15. My thread is coming out of the bottom of these two beads, so I'm going to come across to these two over here, and I'm going to come down through those two beads so that my beadwork will lay diagonal over the box. Pick up 115. You want to make sure your Monty is facing upwards, and then you're going to go through the other hole of your Monty. I'm going to hold that bead in place and I'm going to pull the thread straight out. And then I'm going to pick up one 15 and I'm going to go through these middle two 11s here, right in between my Montes. Pull everything, make every, sure everything's on the top there and you can see they're nice and lined up. I need to be coming out of these two 11s over here, so I'm going to go through the bottom two 11s and then through these two 11s here. Okay, so now I'm going to be adding this little middle set here. So I'm going to pick up two 11s, my six millimeter and two 11s. I'm coming out of these two 11s out of the top. I'm going to come back around and I'm going to come through those same two beads again. And now I'm going to go through the two 11s and the six millimeter. Pick up six 11s. And my needle or my thread is coming out of the bottom of the six millimeters. So I'm going to come back through the same bead again so that my beads will wrap around the side. Now we want to go through these six 11s again. So one, two, three. 
four, five, and six. Pick up three 11s and go through all six of these 11s here on this one side. Now three 11s. Now one thing I forgot to mention last week is I've found that if you use Toho seed beads, it gives you a much more exaggerated um, point, which I like. I think looks really, really well. This is what the point looks like with the Tohos. And you can see, I still get a point, but it's not as exaggerated with the Mayuki seed beads. So um, there is that one difference there in how it looks, but I actually like it, so. I don't really think it matters but all right so if I pull this back so that you can see I'm gonna take and I've got my three on here I'm gonna come through these six beads on this side and then through one bead of my first set of three so I'm gonna be going through seven beads so I'm gonna pull this back down and I'm gonna go through one two three four five six and seven so i'm just not going through that point bead or that middle bead of my set of three now i'm going to skip that point bead get it here i'm going to skip this bead and i'm going to go through one two three four five six seven eight so i'm going to be coming out of this bead so it's not all the way to the bottom so i think i uh what i just said seven eight beads Let's see, so I'm skipping one, and I'm going through five. So one, two, three, four, five. And when you pull it, that bead will pop right up. That's what you want it to do. Five, six, seven, and eight. So I go through eight beads. I'm gonna skip this bottom bead here. Now pull on it so you can see. It. I'm gonna skip this bead and I'm gonna go through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven beads. So skip it and go one. Get it in here. It gets tighter with your one G. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. six and seven now i purposely used a different color thread today so that you could see this really well um people ask you know well how do you know which one to come out of you can see my thread here where it's coming out of the six millimeter and you see it's coming out between these two beads here that's what i want to hide i want to use my 15s to hide these threads so i'm going to come out of the bead right there so if you count down two, I'm coming out of that third bead there. So I'm gonna pick up two 15s, and I'm gonna come down through the six millimeter. Then we want two 15s, and again, the easiest way to say it is I'm gonna skip two here at the bottom, and I'm gonna go through that third one from the bottom. And I'm going to stitch up through my beads. So I'm going through the 11s, the 115 here at the top. Then I'm going to come down through the 15 above and below that 6 millimeter there. Okay. Now I'm going to pick up a 15, and again, I'm going to count. Now this is going to be to the left. I'm going to count over two, and I'm going to go up through. And it's getting really, really tight. Um, and basically, I used a pony needle on the last one that I did. 
um, on this one and I used one needle I pretty much had to chunk that needle um, after I got done and it's just if you use the four pound fire line it gives you a little bit more room to get through if you use anything else besides that four pound it's a little bit harder to get through so again two from the top and I'm coming out of the third one here I'm picking up a 15 and I'm gonna go down through the 15 above and below my six millimeter pull that thread nice and tight there so that everything gets even and if these uh, 11s want to push back just take and push them towards the front there okay so I'm going through the 15 to the right then I'm going to come up through four. One, two, uh, there we go. One, two, three, and four. And basically, I'm wanting to come out of the middle two 11s here directly across from these middle two 11s. Now, this is where our dagger is going to come in. It's going to do a little different. I'm going to pick up two 11s my dagger now if your dagger is two-sided make sure you pick it up on the side you know that you want to be the color you want to be seen so i've got two 11s my dagger and two 11s i'm going to come back through the two 11s here that i'm coming out of to make a circle Now, I can go through these again to reinforce them, but I'm not going to because I can hardly get my thread through my beads at this point. So I'm gonna pick up my 15, my last Monty for the earring, and a 15. My thread is coming out here, so I'm gonna come to my dagger, and I'm gonna go up through my dagger so that my beads will sit diagonally across my little box. I'll pick up 115. I'm going to go through the other hole of my Monty. Hold that Monty in place. And then I'm going to pick up a 15 and I'm going to come up through these two 11s that I started this box with so that it will finish out the dagger edition. Now, Technically, you can be finished with it, but I don't like that I have holes here and here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch my thread to come up out of that hole, and then I'll show you what I'm going to do. Okay, so you can see I'm on the back of the earring, and I've stitched to where I'm coming out of that little hole. And this is not required. This is just to make it look a little more finished. So I've got a size 15 seed bead and I'm going to come straight up through my two 11s here to fill in that hole. A 15 and I'm going to go through my top two 15s, which at this point should be pretty tight. Then I'll do a 15 and come through the two 11s here and then a 15 and I'm going to come through these two 11s so that now those holes are filled in and it looks nicer as far as the finished piece here at the top now you do not have to plug those in I just like how it looks so at this point, I'm going to tie these two threads off and then I'll have the component itself finished. So once you have both of your components finished, all you have to do is attach your ear wire here to the top loop of 15s that you made. So for this sample, I would attach it straight to that top loop and then I have a fun pair of earrings to go with my birthstone ring.
So guys, I hope you enjoyed learning how to make the birthstone earrings. They're super simple and they go really, really well with the project from last week. So like last week, the pattern and the kit for this garnet color are available on my website at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.